Hey, I just want to check in and talk about uh, the comments from Congressman Stephen Lynch of the Massachusetts Congressional Delegation about Fast and Furious. Uh, he seemed to want to blame this whole investigation on uh, politics, Republicans, Republican politics, saying that the Republicans are playing politics with this. Uh, he suggested that the uh, committee that was investigating that they go back and talk to the agents, the ATF agents in Phoenix, which has already happened on several occasions. Um, special agent in charge, Bill Newell, he's testified, he's answered questions. Unfortunately, he was less than forthcoming, seemed very evasive, but not all the agents were that way. Um, from what we've heard from the agents, there was definitely something going on above them. Um, and was Bill Newell involved with it? I definitely think so. Uh, Lenny Brewer, the Assistant Attorney General, he knew all about uh, Fast and Furious. He, his name was on the subpoenas. Um, so I'm not sure how Stephen Lynch can play dumb on this. How, how can you ignore the facts? I mean, Patrick Cunningham, he's the Chief U.S. Attorney for the Office uh, of the District of Arizona. Uh, Chief uh, the U.S. Attorney Cunningham, he's not speaking. He's left his job and he's pleading the fifth. If you have nothing to hide, why would, uh, an, why would the attorney in Phoenix plead the fifth? Um, there's also other whistleblower ATF agents who have been fired. Um, there's definitely a cover-up going on here. I, I just want you to check out Stephen Lynch's words. Um, if anybody is playing politics on this, it's Stephen Lynch. You know, I actually kind of like this congressman. I don't, I don't agree with him on all the issues, obviously. I think a lot of people know that. I recently talked to uh, Congressman Lynch on WBZ Radio, Dan Ray Nightside. We had a good conversation. We didn't agree, but uh, I got along with him. But on this, Congressman Lynch, you are out to lunch. Let me say that again. On this, Congressman Lynch, you are out to lunch. How can you say anybody's playing politics except the Democrats? Your statements were all politics. You're not, you, you, you show that you really are not interested in finding out why Patrick Cunningham, a U.S. attorney, had to plead the fifth, why he isn't speaking, why he has left his job, why Attorney General Holder is not releasing all the documents, all the email correspondence that was requested. Why? Why are they covering up? Why is the Attorney General asking for executive privilege so that he doesn't have to supply this information to the U.S. Congress? If anybody is covering it up, it's the Attorney General. It's the Assistant Attorney General, Lanny Brewer. It is Congressman Stephen Lynch. You're playing politics, Congressman Lynch. You are exactly, you are doing exactly what you claim the other side is doing. Mr. Chairman, may I? Uh, I believe I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will read the amendment. And the clerks will please distribute the amendment. Sorry. The Lynch amendment, insert the following section at the end of the, at the, end of the report. That's unanimous consent. The, considered as read without objection. The gentleman is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a very simple, straightforward amendment. Uh, basically, it's one paragraph. It says the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform should provide a complete and itemized accounting of the cost to the American people incurred by the committee, this committee, and any and all agency and departments within the United States Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security, and the U.S. Department of State in connection with the House investigation of Operation Fast and Furious. Uh, this investigation has now gone on for about 16 months. Uh, there are thousands of, uh, you know, Man and, and uh, council hours that have been put in on this investigation. This is just a straightforward accounting request in terms of what we have spent on this. Uh, it does not reflect the opportunity costs of the from this committee because I, I believe there are there are several dozen other issues we could be focusing on, but we are focusing focusing principally on this. And uh, I just think this would be an important piece of information for uh, the voters to have and for the taxpayers to have in terms of uh, what we're spending our time on while we have a real problem with creating jobs and, and uh, addressing the deficit and some of the other issues that, that the American people think we should be focusing on. Would the gentleman yield? Sure, I'll yield. Um, I join with the gentleman in 
finding that the amount spent is probably much higher than any of us would have liked. I would note that uh, the, the agencies that we would like to get the information as to how much they spent are not within the power of a contempt uh, motion. However, uh, in the case of our expenditures, although they are in the public record, if the gentleman would withdraw his amendment, I would ask our nonpartisan staff to jointly uh, put together an estimate of hours and time spent of our committee. I apologize, but I can't. I can find no basis well, I, under I, which we could use contempt to order these other agencies. Time. Yeah, I, I think that would be that would be accurate if I were amending the the uh, contempt order. I'm actually amending the report uh, in terms of information that we want provided to us. Will the gentleman yield? I will yield. Um, the Attorney General has said that this program was fundamentally flawed. Uh, he also has said that he believes crimes will be committed with these guns that were released purposely into the hands of the cartels for as much as the, the future decade. Is the gentleman suggesting with this amendment that the cost of the Department of Justice to go back and track down those guns uh, be also part of that accounting for what they was botched by the Department of Justice? I think it would look, we want to know what things cost around here uh, on a bunch of di different issues. Uh, this has been a, a really uh, Olympic uh, investigation. It's gone far beyond what I think any of us anticipated when this started out. And uh, I, I think the costs are going to turn out to be staggering if we, if we look at what these individual departments actually expended in this effort. And I'm just trying to look, I'm trying to balance out what we might get between what we, we cost. Uh, and, and again, I repeat, this is only a partial accounting of what was, what the costs are. There's also the, the opportunity costs of us grappling with some other issues that are desperately needed to be addressed in this country. And we, we are focusing an overwhelming amount of our time on, on this one issue. And I just, I would just like to try to have a, a, a balancing out of our expenditures versus uh, the benefits that might be accrued as a result of this investigation. Would the gentleman yield? I certainly would, yes. Thank you. Uh, while there is a tremendous cost involved in this, there are a couple dynamics into it that, that make it difficult in the processing on this. One is we have a border agent that was murdered in this process, and it is difficult to wrap around and to say, gosh, we spent an awful lot of money just investigating one murder and going through that process. So that, that is difficult to wrap around. The, the second thing is obviously the cost dramatically increases as we have back and forth with the administration as they drag their feet to produce documents. That increases our cost. That increases their cost. So that's difficult to evaluate, I would say. Um, and the, the final thing is, it, it, in all of these, uh, I would be interested to know, quite frankly, how much the Department of Justice spent on multiple evaluations of Roger Clements uh, in that hearing. Uh, because we, we have all kinds of things that we look at and go, okay, that Roger Clements hearing, we probably spent way too much money on evaluating. And I agree. We should know that number, and we have it. We have it. We know what the Justice Department spent on that matter. And I'm looking for the same uh, treatment of this case that, w that we look at, uh, you know, what has, what has happened here. Uh, this has gone far beyond the investigation of Agent Terry's murder. Right now we're looking, we're trying to crack open the thought processes of, of uh, individuals in the Justice Department and their delibera internal deliberations. So uh, this is far beyond the investigation of that terrible tragedy. Uh, that's, that's the point of, of my inquiry here in trying to get an assessment of what these costs are. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you. I recognize myself in opposition. Our committee's records are public and available. The other agencies certainly probably will and are certainly welcome to make known their lawyering up, their obstruction, their slow rolling, their not providing what it cost. I would say, however, that the production of documents to us, if they simply gave us carbon copies of most of what they gave, and I'm showing my age with carbon copies, but if they gave us photocopies of the documents they gave to the Inspector General, their cost would be de minimis, basically 80,000 times less than a penny. So I think when you obstruct, it cost. When you cover up, it cost. 
I, with, since it was noted by Ms. Speer earlier, when we talked, she talked about a 20-minute gap in tapes. Watergate cost a lot of money, but it cost a lot of money because we went to the Supreme Court. We went through a process of a president and an administration that were covering up their actions and covering up basically their involvement, and it rose and it rose and it rose. When this began, this was about Brian Terry's murder in a canyon in Arizona. A simple answer of, yes, we let guns walk on February 4th. Yes, it was a mistake. Perhaps, yes, similar things went on during the Bush administration, and it needs to stop, and we're going to take measures would have been much more like the Secret Service's response or even uh, GSA's response after the uh, Las Vegas uh, item became public. The truth is that on February 4th, this committee was given a false statement. Later, testimony was given that asserted that it was true. As the months went on, there were discussions that went on behind closed doors about how they would or wouldn't tell us that they had given us false statements. Now, I've used the term on occasions, lie. I'm not a lawyer. So the difference between giving us false statements and then not retracting them once they knew they were false and lying or giving something which is false and the truth evolves rather than calling it a lie is probably technically above my pay grade. But I will tell you, Brian Terry's family deserves every penny we have spent and if agencies have spent extra money trying to block us, it's caused us to spend more, so be it. In this Congress and the next Congress, with this President, and if there's a next President on my watch, we will get to the bottom of dangerous weapons being allowed to go in violation of existing laws into the hands of the kinds of people that killed Brian Terry. Well, Jan, you? I certainly will in just a moment. That is something for which I will never question the cost. This committee will report cost, but I will never question the cost of a human life unnecessarily taken, not in the line of duty, but because powerful weapons in good condition, practically brand new, were put in the hands of people who probably wouldn't have had that quality of weapon if not for this program. I yield to the gentleman. I thank the gentleman. If, if indeed we were trying to get to the bottom of what the gentleman's contempt citation uh, targets would be trying to figure out uh, from the ATF uh, supervisor in Phoenix why they provided false information uh, to the Justice Department about the gun walking operation that was ongoing. We have decided for some reason to ignore all that. We're not pulling that information forward. I honestly believe if this was about an investigation of, of Agent Terry's death, we would be asking the people who ran this operation in Phoenix, and that directly did uh, lead to the circumstances of, of uh, Agent Terry's death. But what I'm afraid of is that somewhere along the line, during this investigation over the last 16 months, this has become more about the next election now, will the and, less about, will the and less about, no, let me complete my statement. Mr. Ice, with, with all due respect, um, it is my time, so uh, I'll reclaim my time for now. Well, the gentleman yield. I would yield to the gentleman. I guess, my, my, Mr. Chairman, I would ask if the gentleman has actually read the wiretap applications. I yeah, yield to the gentleman. Yesterday. And I found nothing, from my conclusion, read every single one of them, not one statement that the, the uh, Attorney General or anybody in those wiretaps had any information that supported the allegations that you're making. I, I find that, Mr. Chairman, I find that absolutely, totally Each false. and every Each wiretap. Each and, each and every it, wiretap. I have, I have read them, too. And I tell you, Deputy Attorney General, uh, Assistant Attorney General Jason Weinstein, Kenneth Blanco, other people's names are signed on those documents. Well, I can't. And they is crystal clear. It is crystal clear in, those, in, those, in, in that information. And it is unfair and unjust to try to come to a conclusion when you haven't seen all the documents. Sure what we're asking for, no, you have not. What we're asking we for in this committee, what we're asking for in this committee is to see the documents. If it clears the Department of Justice, if Eric Holder didn't know, if the White House didn't know, if the senior people didn't know, then show us the documents and clear this up. But the problem that you have here today is they won't provide the documents. That's why we're here. And you continue to act 
in ignorance. You cannot do that. That's what this committee is supposed to do, is get the information, make a proper and just conclusion. Uh, I'd, ask unanimous consent, with, I'd ask unanimous consent I have an additional 30 seconds and yield to the gentleman. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. If we really wanted to get to the bottom of this, why not bring uh, the chief of the ATF here before the committee, like we asked on several occasions, the person who is saying that if the gentleman would yield, on the weekend of February of July 4th in 2011, in a bipartisan way over the course of two days, they were interviewed. Those transcripts have been available for nearly 11 months, in fact, closer to 12 months. And if you haven't on this dais read those, that information is here. We did question them. We didn't have an opportunity in this committee, as we have with other witnesses, to, to examine the allegations of that of the head of the ATF in Phoenix. What, what I'm saying with, with the earlier statement regarding the, the wiretaps, that there was nothing there that supported the allegations made about senior officials at Justice knowing what's going on. The gentleman's insinuation that the wiretaps would support that is totally misguided. Totally misguided. Uh, my, and, time, and without, my time has without, expired. Without Does going anyone into seek details about those wiretaps with that gentleman's that recognized. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I'll yield a minute to the gentleman. Thank you. We have to be cautious because of the privileged nature of the wiretaps, so I can't talk about the contents of those, but I can say after reading those, nothing, nothing in those wiretaps supports what you're, you're alleging. Not a single, matter of fact, they refute, they refute everything you're saying. Will the gentleman yield? Certainly. Total, the gentleman's time. 15 so. seconds. I totally disagree with it. How do you explain the way that Jason Weinstein, on October 17, 2010, sent an email to James Trustee that says, quote, do you think we should try to have Larry participate in, uh, have Lanny participate in press when Fast and Furious and Laura's Tucson case are unsealed? It's a tricky case, given the number of guns that have walked. How do you, how do you explain the way that they have... Reclaiming my time. Reclaiming my time. Let me uh, say this uh, as I listen to this <coughs> discussion. Um, and I've listened to all the comments today. I've been here every second. And we hear so many comments about Brian Terry. And um, I, I want to make something real clear here. And something that, that is very painful to me. And there's an implication that maybe the people on this side don't care about that family. And that we don't care about the evidence. We, we, we do. We want to get to the bottom of this, too. We made the same commitments. As a matter of fact, when the Terry family came before this committee, it was right after my nephew was, was uh, slain. And I had a conference with them, and I told them, I made a commitment to them that I would do everything in my power to make sure we found out who did this and who's responsible. And I refuse to believe that, I mean, when I read the various documents in this, this um, case, I think some people really screwed up. But I don't think that necessarily folk were trying to obstruct, trying to cover up. I mean, we go on and on and on, and I don't, it doesn't seem like we are getting to what we, we claim we're so concerned about, and that is finding uh, out exactly what happened with regard to Brian Terry and, and how he ended up being killed. Um, ladies and gentlemen, again, I, I said it a few minutes ago, it's so easy for us to sit here and second guess the Attorney General who's the number one law enforcement officer uh, trying to protect over 300 million people. It's easy to sit back. It's easy to sit back from the chair of the former prosecutor. It's easy to make all kinds of decisions. And, you know, people talk about he should know and shouldn't. Sometimes you don't even know what, what people are doing in your own office of 21 people. 
This guy's got, I mean, people all over the country, in Mexico, ATF. Well, we went down and we talked to the ATF and we talked to the Mexican people in a bipartisan trip. They said, we need some better gun laws. When the whistleblowers, everybody said, oh, we're so concerned about the whistleblowers. Well, what did the whistleblowers say? Their number one concern, they begged, they begged us, get better laws. Do that, do us that favor. And so, you know, come on. I think, again, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If we want to get to the bottom of this, I think we can get to the bottom of this. I think the Attorney General is acting in good faith. I think we ought to try to work with him. And I see that my colleague deserves one some time. I'll yeah. yield. Thank you. Thank you. I thank the ranking member. Just to respond to the gentleman's uh, email uh, recitation there, uh, I just want to make clear that what the gentleman was talking about when he said, that the the author of that email said that guns had walked he was talking about the wide receiver program not fast and furious that's how i explain it and there's a there's a further clarification here in an email and he says first of all let me clear up the confusion that you noted about the pronouns when i say it's a tricky case given the number of guns that have walked i am talking exclusively about wide receiver that is the only one of the two cases i am aware of at the point in which guns had walked End quote. And I asked to submit this to the record. Let's see my time is up. The question, oops. the question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Lynch. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Does anyone else seek recognition? Chairman, ask for a roll call. Pursuant, the gentleman asked for a recorded vote. A recorded vote is, is ordered.